Rossi, um, back to talk to you about doing uh, multi-dimensional scaling in R. Uh, like most uh, statistical methods, R has an implementation. Uh, so we're just going to try to show you this. Um, again, this is optional material. It's only those people who want to learn something about R. R is a much more a little more complicated than Excel and requires a little bit of a steeper learning curve. So uh, I provide you with a source file uh, here, uh, run mds.r, uh, which allows you to uh, undertake this. So the first thing we need to do is read in the data. And what I've done is I've put the data in the file car diffs underscore array dot csv. That's just written right out of Excel. Now uh, what that is is it's an array, eight by eight, all eight cars, um, rows, all eight cars of the columns, and in each cell is the dissimilarity measured on a zero, one to 100, um, uh, mean dissimilarity from all respondents. So I took the Qualtrics data, I averaged it uh, for each possible pair of cars, and I converted it from a similarity scale to a dissimilarity scale. Unfortunately, R wants it in terms of dissimilarity, so I just subtracted it from 100. So let's read that file in and take a quick, read a quick look at it. Okay, so let's look at what it is, what's in there, and it's just this array. You can see each of the this first variable here is just a list of car names. All the rows are named by the cars, and in each element is the um, mean dissimilarity. So a small number means similar, less dissimilar. So the smallest number here is 26.24. That's Versa Fit, which makes some sense, right? The, the Honda Fit and the Versa are very similar. So they have the lowest mean dissimilarity, okay? Um, however, people, for example, think the Ford Focus is very different from the Smart Car and the Audi A3 and much more similar to the Fit, okay? So that just, re just remember that these numbers are in terms of dissimilarities because the R routine requires that. Okay, um, so now unfortunately this array, all read and write from Excel, um, is a little, is, is what R calls a data frame. We have to convert it to a matrix or an array. And let's get rid of this first column here, which is just text, and make the row names equal to that. So uh, what, that's what I'm doing here with these commands here. Row names equal the first column and then getting rid of the first column and then making it into an array. Okay, I'll call, I'll say library mass, which is the library which contains the ISO MDS command. That is part of the standard um, R distribution, so uh, you, you can use that command. You don't have to download anything. Okay, so let's try to fit actually a one-dimensional uh, MDS mapping for the car data set. Now remember that what that's doing, that's saying that these, all these possible dissimilarities, which really live in eight dimensional space, because there's eight products, right? That's the most flexible map. That's like just nothing more than repeating all what we have. But suppose there was actually a one dimensional map so that I could orient every one of these eight products on an axis and just to simply read off the distances on that axis. That's the equivalent of trying to find the best fitting one dimensional map. So let's do that first by running this command. So it's the ISO MDS command. I'm going to put diffs into it, and I'm going to say k equals 1 because that is one-dimensional map. And it'll run through. It ran, it, you know, took, it was instantaneous. And you can see here the final value of stress is 36.5%. Remember, R reports stress as a percent. 1 minus R squared, that's not very good. Remember, we're looking for things well below 5%. So that means that a one-dimensional array, a one-dimensional representation of a map, rather, is not adequate for this data set. This data set has more into it, more, more in it than one dimension. It's really got two or more dimensions. So let's fit a, a, um, a MDS map for two dimensions. Again, just repeat the same command, but just substitute k equals two for k equals one. And you can see it took a little longer it took about 25 times, iteratively reducing stress at every... So what it's doing here is guessing at maps, different ways of representing each of those eight cars in, in two dimensions. Um, and it does say it converged. The value of stress is very, very, very small, less than 1%, less than one-tenth of 1%, which is actually excellent. 
right? So we don't need to go to three dimensions because in two dimensions, we're basically able to explain all of the variation between these products in terms of dissimilarity, or virtually all of it, okay? Um, if you look at what's in this, this object called out car, in other words, that's the output of the procedure, you can see there are the points. So each car is represented by a point, point in two dimensions. The first dimension here is the first column. That would be the horizontal dimension. The vertical dimension is given here in the second point and the stress value here. Okay, so let's plot these points um, in, um, in a map. Um, and I've written a function in R to do that to make it look a little pretty, make sure there are text labels on each point, and color things. So that's called MDS plot, and I need to load that into R first in order to use this like a macro in Excel. Just, uh, of course, it's a very vastly more powerful than a macro, but it's the same idea. And here's the MDS plot right here, okay, which is the one we see in the class notes, where we have this first dimension and second dimension. We Remember, I think we interpreted the first dimension as, as something like a, a size dimension. The second dimension as something like a luxury dimension, so that the lo, these kind of low-end models here are considered very, very, very lo, less luxurious, all the way up to the A3. Um, and there's a big gap here in the middle of here, really, between the Mini Cooper and the A3 on luxury scale. Uh, so these are similar size, but they're just well spread away from all the other cars in terms of luxury. Okay, so that's a, a brief introduction to MDS. Again, um, I just want to emphasize this optional mater material. Uh, R can be a little frustrating the first time you use it because there's a lot more to it. It's much, much more powerful than Excel. Um, so you kind of have to be a little, very a little patient with it. But since I've given you the uh, script file or source file, you can just load that into um, our studio and do exactly what I did. Just execute lines by highlighting them and saying run, and that'll produce these same maps. And if you do your own MDS, of course, all you need to do is get your data in the form of a differences array. So, um, uh, so bye for now and have fun.